Libel's in writing, slander is oral. So television, radio, oral. Libel, newspapers, online, etc. And that's, the, that's one of the most significant ways people can sue. The number one reason people get to my office. I try probably a libel case at least once a year, right? For, I've represented the Chronicle for 15 years, I've represented the New Yorker Magazine, I've represented the New York Times over the years. I've represented a lot of people, and then a lot of individual people who get sued for a letter they wrote, or a blog post they did. I have two cases right now on blog posts. I love that. One on Facebook. I have a Facebook case. Somebody getting sued for what they put on Facebook. We'll see if that works. So I want you to imagine the person who's suing is running a race. Okay, ready? Everyone over here ready? Running a race. They're running a race. In order to win, that is to get to the end of the race and get a lot of money, because by the way, you know what the average jury verdict is? $2.4 million. If it gets your attention. That's the average jury verdict in defamation cases when it gets to a jury, which is terrible. That's why you don't want to be in my office. Okay? But since you're going to write a lot of tough stuff, you could be in my office. Right? So the first thing has to be false. It must be false. It must be negative. It must be factual. It must have been communicated to someone, published. It must be about somebody, identification, causing damage to reputation, and published with some fault. Let's figure out what that means. Ready? Let's try some out. Let's start with number one. It has to be false. All right? Let's try it out. One of my cases. Is the following substantially false? All right? Here we go. My Clyde Chronicle. Published an article that only the Chronicle could publish, which is Moore University, an accredited university over in uh, Lafayette at the time, is an academy of carnal knowledge. That was what the story is about. Academy of carnal knowledge. The actual facts were that the university does give an accreditation, accredited degree in sensuality. They've got the state of California to approve going to college and having a degree in sensuality. They even have a course called Mutual Pleasurable Stimulation in which you bring a friend to class and you do it. You, as, 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 the, as, the, as the syllabus says, make a friend of someone else's crotch. That was in the syllabus. So the Chronicle publishes that they are an academy of carnal knowledge. Is that false? It's, are they, they say it's absolutely false. We teach, we're called Moore University, not because we want more, but because of Sir Thomas More. And the need for, for sensuality in life and sensuality is a legitimate study. And what's wrong with learning sex and sex education? It's a big part of our lives. Why are you making fun of us and saying that we're carnal? What's the word carnal mean? Instinctual. Instinctual. That's so kind. It, it means more than that, of course. Animal. Carnal, animalistic, atavistic. Ugh. Right? Primal. That's, a, that's kind, too. Primal. <coughs> those stories, right? <coughs> Mutual pleasurable simulation. And the court said it's close enough. It captures the sting of what the truth is. Because you have broad literary license as long as you get the substantial truth. You've got to get it right. But if you don't know what you're writing about, you get it wrong. So it's got to be false. Okay, in addition, in addition, it's got to be negative. If you falsely report that Jim Wagstaff won the Nobel Prize for Literature, which I would like to win, right? I wrote a, a, another book called, uh, uh, called Romancing the Room, which is about speaking. I'd love to win the Nobel Prize for literature. I did not. So that is false. Is it negative to say I won the Nobel Prize for literature? Everyone? No. That's very good. Thank you. That was a, a quick no. Right? Hey, by the way, what if you quote me as saying, Jim Wagstaff gave a speech today and he bragged about winning the Nobel Prize for literature. Now, let's suppose I never bragged about that. Is that false, everyone? Yes. And is it also negative? Yes. Because you can libel someone by giving misquotations. Getting the quotes wrong can make them look bad. Try the whole case in there. So let's try one out. Negative meaning. Ready? Put your thinking caps on. A gossip columnist writes the following. Brad Levine was eating a leisurely lunch at Boulevard restaurant in San Francisco, and he twirled the shrimp dangling on his fork, and he took a bite and continued talking to his famous lawyer, Jim Wagstaff. That's in the newspaper. Got it? Oh, actually, he was eating a tortellini. <laughs> Is that false, everyone? Yeah, it's false. I'm tortellini's not shrimp. Is it negative? Oh, is it negative? How come it's negative? Who is my friend? He's Jewish. He's Jewish, and what does that mean? He was not kosher. Well, it, it, there are Jews who are kosher, and he is kosher, and therefore, when it falsely reported that he was eating a shrimp, it was reporting that he was violating his entire religious tradition. That is false and negative, even though the reporter didn't even know it. Sometimes meaning is created... You don't know it. 
Your job as a journalist is to strive for shared meaning. For reasons I will not share with you, I needed to purchase a Ken doll a few years ago for a speech I was giving at a friend's bachelor party. Let's just stop right there. Whatever you say. Whatever I say, thank you. I go to Walgreens to buy the Ken doll, and I say to the clerk, do you have Ken dolls? And she says, aisle six. I marched aisle six. There's not a Ken doll or a Barbie in sight. Aisle six is filled with candles. I said Ken doll. She heard candle all the time. It's, just, it's not just telephone among people. All the time it happens. Meaning is lost because of its communication. And being journalist means listening. I'm going to give you a really important thing my mom taught me when I was seven years old. And forgive me for being religious. She said, God gave you two ears and one mouth because it's the correct ratio. 